It was a lovely day on the wood headline. Well, not for Timothy, because he wasn't steaming properly and his fire was dirty and clogged with clinker due to the bad quality of coal. Sorry Timothy, but we cannot spare you at the moment. We haven't got an engine that would take your place here at the yard. Hello sir, I'm doing my best sir. But I haven't had a proper overhaul since 1947. Well, that's a little long. I agree, sir. But the dock were a private company, and they didn't have enough money to overhaul me. I see. Um, Timothy, I'll see if I can get another engine and then have you repaired. Thank you, sir. Mr. Salmon said goodbye to Timothy and his crew, and then he walked away back to his office. A few hours later, Mr. Salmon and Mr. Philipson arrived at a scrapyard in Wales. Now, what was it we are looking for? A locomotive of any type in good working order. And don't we forget, cheap. The two men surveyed the yard, full of diesel locomotives ready for scrap. Soon, they spotted a green BR Class 35 HiMac diesel locomotive standing alone on a siding. Hello there, what's your name? David sir, but everyone called me Dave. Hmm, you're in fantastic working order, but how come you're here? Uh, I don't know. Me and my fellow classmates were withdrawn from service nearly a decade ago. Well, we can't have you sitting here ready for the end, now can we? You're coming with us to the Woodhead line to shunt our trains for the other engines and perform duties along the main line. Now tell me, can you run? I don't know. Well, let's hope it does, because I didn't mean to pay for a diesel to transport you to our line. Mr. Philipson filled Dave with f diesel fuel and then he climbed into his cab hoping he, that he would be able to start the engine. After a lot of tries, the engine came to life. In the meantime, Mr. Salmon went to pay for Dave. He was able to make a good deal with the manager, and then he rejoined Dave and Mr. Philipson. Come on Dave, we're going home. Mr. Salmon stepped inside Dave's cab, and then, Dave roared away. They were able to return to Sheffield by that evening. Timothy, this is Dave. He's our newest engine. Does this mean? Yes, you'll get your well-deserved overhaul after all. Great! Now, Norbert will ask you to Manchester on his next heavy goods train. From there on out, a class 37 will be taking you to Doncaster Engine Repair Shop. Okay, sir. And so it was. Timothy was taken to Doncaster. Doncaster Works were known to have built many famous steam locomotives like the Flying Scotsman, the world's most famous locomotive, and Silverlink, the first ever A4 Pacific to be built. It was no doubt that a place like this, they wouldn't be able to repair a little old J94. Meanwhile, they was getting along quite well. He liked shunting from the day he was built, but he also liked running fast trains, passenger trains especially. John and Dave got along very well. Unlike all the other engines, they both liked football. They talked about it all the time. Maybe we'll get to haul a football special since we are so near to Manchester. Yeah, maybe. That'd be great.
One afternoon, John was having trouble reaching his top speed, and soon he found out why. Ah, oh, your pantographs have failed, yet again. Again? Talk about better bearing. Well, we'll have to call Dave. He should be a realist in Manchester. Dave soon came to the rescue, with Mr. Salmon on board. Hello, John. Dave will take you to Manchester, and then a class 47 will come to pick you up and take you to Doncaster. Lucky for you, I'm buying you a new pair of pantographs. These will probably work longer. You alright, John? Yes, Dave, I am alright. Dave coupled up to the front of the train, and he started pulling it with all his might. After passing through the Woodhead Tunnel, he was able to reach the limit. Soon, he reached London Road. Congratulations, Dave! You're able to make good time, even after the delay. Ah, it was nothing, really. Hang on. Tell a lie, you're early. Well, I did used to work on the Western region. Just then, a two-tone horn could be heard. Where is this Class 76 I was ordered to collect? You'll have to wait for him to be taken off the train that was just brought in. Oh, do come on, I don't have a lot of time, you know. I'm shunting, I'm shunting. Don't worry, you'll be on about before you know it. Great lad, great. That afternoon, John was shunted into the works, onto the track next to Timothy. Hi Johnny, what brings you here? Pantographs. Again? Yes, again. Hey, that reminds me, how's David doing? He's doing great. Today after I failed he was able to make up for the lost time and arrive there early. It sounds like he's doing a better job than me. 
I don't think he'll be returning to the yard again. I don't want to be scrapped. What I meant to say is... Now slow this down. We don't want this J94's buffers broken. Whatever you say, sir. The next day, Mr. Salmon came to visit the engines at Doncaster. Ah, hello you two. I'm here to speak to you, Timothy. David is staying at the yard, but don't worry. I've got a job for you as well. You'll be running the Penniston to Watt branch line. Really? Thank you, sir. I'd be glad to run that line. After a few weeks, Timothy came home from Doncaster. As soon as he got there, he was sent to Penniston Station, where he took over the branch. Dave stayed at the yard at Sheffield, but on occasions, he took trains to Manchester. He's now a proud member of the Woodhead Lines fleet, and he does his job well. <laughs>